Everything's pretty sweet. Yeah, you like the color? Very vibrant. It is. So in today's video with the Ram Charger, we're not working on the front. Instead, we're going with the party in the back and no, we're not putting a mullet on it. We need to put a rear bumper on and we're not just putting one on, we're gonna build it. Since we're going to be building one, we're gonna need some steel. And I think this is a good place to start. There's just a bunch everywhere. So we're gonna wanna build something that's pretty tough because I'm gonna be yanking on it with yanking ropes. I'm possibly gonna be putting a, a hitch in for trailers. I don't expect I'll be towing trailers often, but it's an option. I like this. It's dangerous around here. Perfect. Let's go make a measurement and then we can make our first cut. All right, so our first measurement, 38. We'll cut it a little bit big. My plan is to kind of go with the style that's on the Rudicon, which has a solid piece in between what would be the frame rails on it with the hitch mounted into that. I think what we're gonna do is gonna wrap around and protect a little bit of this quarter panel because this is, this is big, this is a full-size rig. I don't wanna be crumpling stuff on it. I want it to look kind of good. So we'll go make that first cut and then we'll see what we need to do to get it actually mounted. Okay, so we have these tabs on here mounted. So now we gotta get this on there and centered up to the best of our abilities. How's that look? Well, we're done. <laughs> it's an excellent start, we'll say that. Okay, so we got another piece cut, and it's gonna go right under there like that. The only thing is I wanna put my hitch receiver in that. So I could use the old one, it's right here, but I don't really wanna cut it up. So I'm gonna show you where I've been getting a majority of my steel for this entire project, for all my gussets, all my brackets, everything pretty much to make that. But this is it. So other than those few lengths that we've used for the bumper already that I got from the rack, this is where I've been getting everything. There we go. This is what we need. Good and strong. I want it to be something you can hang the entire vehicle off of. That one looks like it. We have the main part of the bumper done. The structural part is complete. We just have to tie it in better. So to do that, I'm just, I just built these plates to kind of go on the end here, like, like so. They're gonna get welded to the edge of this bumper here, and then they're gonna get bolted to the frame so that we could still pull it off. Okay, so the next thing now that we have these plates tacked on the side is the round bar. So that's gonna go something like that, and then it's gonna wrap around the side like that. I think I've got my first mark here for the tube bender. Okay, so I want it angling up slightly. All right, I like that. Now on to the other side. So if I'm being honest, I really don't think that looks bad. I do think this is gonna get into some rocks, but it's gonna get into some rocks. I like this gap because it leaves me enough room to run my exhaust out or reverse lights or things like that. I have options. So other than that, I think we'll get it pulled off, get it all welded up. And then we'll get it painted tomorrow, or Janelle will, I think. And then we'll get it back on there, and away we go. All right, so yesterday we got the rear bumper put on the Rad Charger, and I think it looks okay, but the front one needs a bumper now. I mean, we could just use the original one. We have it right here. And let's put it up and see. The only problem I see with this is there's no spot for a winch. Anyway. Uh, uh. So there's some parts of the old bumper that I want to put into the new one, such as the bull bar. I think we got to keep that. But we have to make a winch plate and tie it into the frame strong enough to hold the winch 
and more importantly, to hold the entire weight of the vehicle off of it if we have to, like off of a cliff or something. Fingers crossed that won't happen. Yeah, but if I'm pulling another guy out of the cliff, like a Lexus or an S10, thinking ahead here, thinking ahead. Just like on the rear, I think we should have a plate go into the frame, and we'll uh, build off of that. Surprise, I built the plates already. <laughs> All right, so I have these holes lining up with some holes that were in the frame previously, and I added my own for extra strength. But this is how it's looking. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's fancy. Huh? All right, so I just finished taking off the bull bar from the bumper. Let's go see how Rudy's doing. He's making the design right now. All right, how's it coming? I think it's coming pretty good. Hopefully it fits. Alright. That looks good to me. Wow, you're not going to see it under there at all. Maybe we should move it forward a little bit? Yeah. We had a change of plan. I can live with that. That looks dope from right here. We're gonna be putting a roll cage in the Rad Charger today. So the plan is to build something that ties into the frame and holds everything together so that we don't get any like body flex or anything like that because this thing gonna be in some rocks. So the first piece I wanna put in starts on the floor right here down by my feet and goes up this A pillar and past my head. So let's get to it. So the tubing that I'm using is actually DOM. This one is shiny because Janelle shined it up. That's also what we used on the links. And yeah, just ultimately we decided it would be quicker and easier just to polish it than it would be to mask it off and paint it once we are done. In the end, we're saving time and it's, it's kind of a vibe, you know? Greatest cut you'll ever see with a cutoff wheel. Slide this in here. Should've picked up more of this stuff. But this is how I'm gonna get my angle. That's how you're gonna get your angle. Yeah. I would say that's pretty dang good right there. I could go a little further than that. Wow, that goes a lot further than I thought it would. What? I think that's good. Okay, we're gonna start the bend right on that mark. We'll see. Uh, it's always sketchy. You gotta figure it out. So if you guys are watching this to learn how to do this... Yeah, don't watch me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm guessing. I'm a good guesser. I have a good track record. But I'm still guessing. <laughs> okay. Well, there, there really is only one spot to put it, so we'll try that. So the plan is to shove the roll cage through the floor which will tie into my rock sliders, which will then tie into my frame. Oh, did you break it? Broke the bit, like, oh, instantly. I missed it. It didn't even want to go in. Ah. What a joke. So, sorry about not being able to get the shot for you guys. I do feel bad, but. Look. Is it in the floor? Yes. That's the hole that did it. That is, that's just sheet metal. And it snapped my drill bit, my pilot drill bit for this hole saw. Yeah. Let's go to the store. All right, let's go. All right, got it. Okay, now we can finally see if this will go in. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is uh, just bending this more. It's hitting like the glass and stuff. Okay, so we need to get rid of some of this rocker panel to put in the style of rock slider that I want. The kind actually gets welded to the body and we'll use like a two by six rectangle. I've got some on the floor right here. We'll make our uh, sliders out of this. But before we get started on the slider, we have to cut away the metal that we don't need anymore. So, gonna be doing that.
This might not be coming back out. All right, so I had a certain goal before I went home tonight. I mean, we didn't quite reach that. We got one slider on, got the front A pillars bent, we got the hoop bent, we got the other rock slider built, but not put on yet. But we just didn't have any luck with these hole saws. So uh, yeah, we're calling it quits. It's one of those days, you know? You know the days that you're working and you're like, I don't wanna be here anymore. Well, for me that happens around 10 o'clock. So we're just gonna pack up and go and uh, get the right tools and tomorrow it will go smoothly. Yeah. We'll be back in the morning. Good morning. We are back and feeling good about the day. Let's get started. So. Now that the stores are open, we got the proper hole saw and drill bit, and we got these holes put in the floor and the roll bar slid in. So it's it's just sitting there, like don't touch it or it might fall on me. But I think that looks pretty good. So we'll get these A-pillars put in next, get them put up to this halo bar and get them notched. We'll figure out where they need to be notched into that. And then we'll get this headache bar put in in front of us, all tacked together and then we'll drop it through the floor and get the whole thing welded up. Time to go cut that. Super high risk, super low reward. Now we're just gonna use this fancy dance tubing notcher to notch that tubing so that we could put those into the halo bar or whatever it is. All right, wish me luck. All right. Well, I hope we're close. Yeah, like it's not that much more out than a handle would be, really. No, yeah, and like I'm hitting my head on this at that point. Like this is above this line. Probably get a couple good bonks out of it. Just remind me not to wear my sunglasses. I think it's fine. I, I don't see a problem. Like when you're test fitting, you're always trying to find the worst. When, re terrible. when in reality, it, it's never a real problem. Teamwork. I feel like once we get it up, things will be better. Yeah. But it's really, it's actually sitting really low right now. All right, so things got a little busy yesterday, so it's the next day. We have the cage dropped through the floor and tacked together. I just added some supports in the middle, so if you see those, there's really no big deal. But we've got everything covered to weld it up. Originally, I wanted to TIG weld it, but due to the sake of time, it's not really an option. And when I did try to TIG weld it, there was something not working right, so I just kind of dropped it. I don't have time to figure it out right now. So we'll be MIG welding it together. So we'll get suited up, crawl in there, start burning some metal. Added some gussets here, that's pretty warm. But we're ready to lift this thing up and uh, probably tack it in, and then we'll finish the back of the cage. The reason I didn't build the back of the cage is because the bars I want to put in end on structures, like the shock towers, and I, I can't drop that through the floor. So we'll have to build that the old fashioned way. I'm happy with it. I could rest my leg against that. It doesn't block my AC vent, the important part of it anyway be pointed at me. I still think that we can get the vent windows open that we're never gonna open. And now we need to attach it to the sliders. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. Wasn't planned this way, but this bar pretty much comes off level. So we'll build a platform off of there that ties from here, catches that, and then into the frame. And then we'll do a couple more into the frame. And then we'll have to saw this off. Then we'll throw another kicker into the frame there too. Might throw a kicker down, pointing forward. Haven't decided yet on both of those. That'd be a huge structural thing. And then we'll finish this cage out the rear and attach into the shock towers. You're doing a great job. All right, so let me show you where I'm at. I've added more bars. So after getting the front tacked in, it was always in the plan to build more, and I did just that. So we came off in kind of a factory roll bar configuration. It's basically so that if we put the back seat in, the passengers are safe if we roll over as well. So we only did what was needed and a little more. 
All right, so with the roll bar finished, we'll come over here to the sliders. Right now I just have it welded to the side of the truck, but we need to get it attached to the frame because that's how I'm gonna hold all of this together. So if you look under here, I'm gonna put a support that goes from the rock slider across into the frame, and then I'm gonna put a gusset over and then I'll be able to weld this firmly to the gusset. I'll be able to do that front and rear. And then in the middle, I just have one that's kind of angled. So that's what's gonna add triangulation for when we like drop off of ledges and hit it on rocks and trees and stuff like that. I'll get these other two ones tacked in. Up here, you can see there, the roll cage is actually hanging down just a little bit. We need to cut that off flush so that I can put that plate up and uh, have something really nice to weld to. Lots to do still, so much to do. Let's see, what day is it? Sunday, wait, Saturday? Today's Saturday? Today's Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday is when we have to have this thing done because Nell and I are going to Wyoming for the week and for the weekend. And we're planning on taking the Ram Charger up there and then on our way back, we'll hit Moab and meet up with the other guys for the competition. <sighs> oh, we have so much to do still. All right, I'll get the bottom of that roll cage sawed off and then we can put our supports to the frame, weld it up solid. If we ever had to pull the body off of the frame to do full restoration or whatever, all we have to do is just cut those three supports, six, I guess if you include the ones on the other side, and then you can pull the body off like you would normally. But yeah, let's get that done because we are running out of time. You wanna know something really weird about the rules for this build? These lights don't go against my budget. So we're taking advantage of that and we're gonna cram a couple lights on here. So let me explain what the purpose of the Onyx build challenge is a little bit for you. So basically we were going to build these rigs and showcase as many of the Onyx elite partnerships as we could. Part of those elite partnerships are rigid lights. So LED lights are expensive. That's just the nature of them. We knew they costed a lot. So in the beginning when we were making the rules for this, we decided to exclude lights from the build cost because A, they don't really help with the performance of the rig. I mean, yes, they help you see at night, but they're not gonna help you get over an obstacle. If anything, they might make it a little bit worse because it's just more weight. Something else to go wrong. So per the rules, lights are excluded, and that's how I'm able to put a couple thousand dollars worth of lights on. But that's not as much as these lights would have cost because I ended up using my Onyx Elite membership to purchase these lights at a discounted price. And you can too if you sign up for the Onyx Elite program. And with the Onyx Elite program, there's plenty of other companies that you can utilize to help you get discounts and cheaper parts for your build at home. So we got a couple boxes of lights. We're gonna put them on this rig. So the vision for these lights is to have them stacked across the front. Kind of old school, kind of keeping the vibe of older full-size rig. So I think we're gonna have eight of them stacked across here. I'll look pretty good, but we need to build a mount to hold them. We only have four days left. We could be using this time to do other things. But here we are. But we're not. <laughs> but we're not. Lights before lockers, you know what I mean? All right, so the plan right now is to build our light mounts into our roof rack bar. And to get the roof rack mounted, we're gonna have to go through the roof, which is sad. Like, that breaks my heart. But it has to be done, right? Ah! So the way I wanna do it, this roof has two layers to it, actually. So that's kind of cool. But there's these prints in it where they glue the roof together. And that's the most narrow spot. So when I bolt this together, I want it to be in that spot. So if you look right up here above the roll cage, I got the holes started. I'll be able to have a standoff here, goes to a plate, and then I'll be able to bolt through the plate through the roof to another plate, and I'll be able to build my entire roof rack or light bar mount off of that plate. So it'll be super strong, it'll be tied into my cage. And it'll look freaking cool. And it'll look fabulous. We'll still have to build some little standoffs in there to keep the roof from crushing like, like that. I don't know if I've said this in video. The thing about building something old and cool, or just building anything, really, or like new. You gotta be confident enough in, in what you're doing to make it better than it would be if you did nothing at all. Sometimes I ride that fine line of, I don't know if I can actually make this good. So, you know, you gotta, gotta be prepared for the worst. So, I could go small from there to here, and then we'll do some lighter little kickers off of there. And then our, our lights would be in here. 
Okay. Kind of like that. There could be a scenario where these bear the entire weight of the vehicle. Let's, let's hope not. So I have my holes drilled through the roof and these go from the top down and these are little standoffs because there's a gap in the roof and I don't want to like crush and distort the roof. So there needs to be something that separates it, if you will. If you go up on the roof, you can see. So if you look, it doesn't just go through the roof and then you're in, there's two layers there. So when we put these in, those will help it stand off. Just like that. We'll silicone around that so that it doesn't leak. It just looks like a rust hazard for someone in the south. <laughs> All right, so while Rudy's been working on the roof rack today, I've kind of been doing my own thing. Helping Rudy sometimes is not the easiest thing ever. He asked for my opinion, I give it. He's like, nah, I'll do it my own way. He just does it. So we're letting that be today. But the main thing I've been working on is some body work today. So right here, this is where Rudy stretched the fenders, which looked really good, but you could see the welds like right here. Bondo is a magnificent thing. And it pretty much covered up this whole spot. We just have this last little spot right there and then that'll be good. Otherwise, for other things I've been working on is just like the little fluff stuff. So kind of just the extra little things, like not the roll cage, not the tires. Oh, We've got all these sheets that we want to lay down back here, just cause this is a really, loud rig and we want to be able to at least talk to each other while we're riding so we got a lot of little things going and just helping rudy where we're needed Moving. all right it's looking better all right so we were using the forklift to get the bender upright into a position to bend the roof rack bar so i wanted to bend it all in one piece but it was super intricate super tricky but we got it done now we just have to bend another one to go underneath it all right so it took us probably a long time but you saw it in like two minutes to get this so this is going to be the start of our roof rack so let me just show you something here. These lights are designed to go right in here like that. We'll have eight of them. So tomorrow when we get in, we'll get this on and the rig painted. Yeah, that's right, it's getting painted. But it is late, it is time to go home. I am out of gas for the welders. We'll be back in the morning. All right, so we got the roof rack up there, but it's not quite given the vibes that I had hoped for. It kind of gives it a like a tiara or like a buzz cut kind of look. And it's just, I don't know, it's a little bit too much, if you know what I mean. So Janelle has been working all day on getting this thing prepped for paint. And here we are, prepped for paint. Per the painter's instructions, we're putting a self-etching primer on all of the bare metal. We're kind of doing a higher end, do it at home job, do it yourself job. I'm gonna start off by saying we have no idea what we're doing. The only painting we've ever done is with like a, a spray can, like a spray paint can. So this is a whole nother world for me. But I think we got the right stuff. I'm not gonna show you the colors yet. I'm gonna wait till it's done because they're a bit shocking, but I think they're gonna work. They're gonna look bold. It's gonna look, it's gonna stand out. It's gonna be loud. It's everything we want. Guess we should start mixing paint and get some color down. All right, so we're going with two colors. We're going for a fade. We have a base coat and then we got a clear over the top of that. I mean, we walked into a paint store this morning and we're like, hey, get us the closest you can to these colors. I'm not gonna show you those colors yet because I wanna see, I wanna know your reaction. Cause I don't wanna spoil the color that it's going to be if we're gonna paint it in black and white. I can tell you're nervous. I am terrified. I am, you have no idea. This is terrifying to me. This kind of detail work, I'll weld all day. I'll cut, do things like that. But this, this is a new experience. So I think we should mix half of it first. Since we're professionals, we got professional things. Look at that, the bodysuit. It's a good thing we uh, checked the size. <laughs> 2X, that's what the size this is. I'm gonna look like a Chevy Oompa Loompa. This is cool. Wow. It's a little restrictive. This is nice. Can't hear me, can you? 
Oh yeah. That color is loud and proud. Whoa, that is super light. There we go. Boy, if this is how our fade's going to be, it's going to be terrible. Base coat number one done. Probably 15 minutes and we'll uh, put the second color on. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at that. That's some nice black and white. Black and white? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't see yet. It looks so tacky. I know exactly what will fix this. What? A black line, a solid black line. It looks super good on this side. That's exactly what we wanted. The only thing, we gotta get that black. I think if that's black, what? I like it, it looks so good though. Yeah, but we can't fix it quick for shows and stuff. Yeah. Well, it looks like it'll catch a pretty big salmon. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you can probably figure it out. We got a lot to learn about body work. Clear coat will cover that. Now, we're on to the clear coat. Well, this is the hardener, but you know what I mean. Oh, shit. Well, with this jumpsuit on, I can say I officially have my blood, sweat, and tears into this bill. Huh? No tears yet. Actually, yeah, tears. I got something in my eye the other day. It started tearing up. But, look at that. So, okay, so before you say anything bad about it, it's a little odd. Just wait. Just wait. I promise it will get better. It looks rough right now. And that's, that's just because it's, yeah. And if you hate it, that's okay. I hate it too. If you like it, that's okay. I like it a little bit too. I'm still questioning whether or not it was a good idea to get rid of the gold or to even paint over the patina, but this could actually make a pretty cool patina if we faked it. We'll be back tomorrow, I guess, to drip everything off. Roof rack. Does it need to come forward? It's so yeah. ugly. That thing's pretty sweet. Yeah, you like the color? It's very vibrant. It is. Very, very vibrant. Do you hate it? No. no. Are you kidding me? Okay. You're gonna be, everybody else is gonna have their vehicles black or something. And you're gonna be um, like. I think it's pumpkin orange and like blueberry blue. Oh. <laughs> You'll pop. I'll pop. I like it. All right, so these mounts are for our six inch round lights. We were gonna have eight, but it didn't look quite right, I didn't think, so six it is. To get this thing officially done, we got it painted, obviously. We got bumpers put back on. They got a little bit of paint themselves. Now we just need to mount the air compressor, run our air lines to our lockers, add the lights on, wire all the lights in, add our rugged radio so that we can communicate with the other teams. We need to put the interior in, put tires on, and we are good to go. Oh, and put the winch on and wire that up. But that should be pretty quick. And uh, almost done. We have only today left to do this stuff. So here we go. Alrighty, lights are on, but they're not wired yet and they're also not tilted. But, take a look at that. It's not too bad. Alrighty, next up is the winch.
All right, so next step is finishing the interior. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna like carpet down. So we ended up taking out the original carpet and it actually ended up just looking really gross. So instead what we're gonna use is we have this big roll of carpet that we just got from Home Depot. So we're just gonna cut that up. I got my measurements here. We'll see how it works. We got this all cut out. Let's go see if it fits. I don't have very high hopes. Oh, ouch. Okay. I mean, that's not bad. I just cut it a little long. Other than that, I like it. All right, we'll trim this edge down and then call it good for back here. Then we just got the front section and then all that's left for the interior is just a new headliner. All right, I got this front piece cut out too. This one's a little different just because we have this little slant right here that goes down into the front seat area. This one's not too bad either. This is gonna look really good. Alrighty, we got carpet all glued in. It's looking pretty good. Hopefully it doesn't go anywhere because we have to put a spare tire back here. So it feels pretty solid though. Next up is the headliner. So we're in the office now, sorry for the echo. But I got the headliner board cut out. Um, you can see how down there at the end we have the sunroof because we want to keep that. It's like one of the coolest parts of the vehicle. We're not just leaving the headliner as a yucky purple insulation board. Not gonna happen. So we ordered this. It is, I don't even know what to call this. It's vinyl quilted foam fabric. That's what we're gonna use. Um, it's this pretty brown leather. So we're gonna cover it in that and then Put it up in the rig. I feel like it's gonna change a lot of things. It's gonna give it like a, a classy vibe almost. Good grief. This is looking really fancy for a rock crawler, but I mean, we wanna be comfortable. I think Ian, is trying to make us as most uncomfortable as we can be. True. So, anyway, let's throw this up. That's, that's good. That's perfect. All right. Pretty dang proud of myself. I don't say that in a boasting manner either, but I'm not much of an artsy person. So usually like things like this, I let Rudy do. Turned out pretty good. All right, so long story short, the rig is done and I think it looks good. The color looks great. We got the front rear bumper done. Roof rack looks pretty good too. And we're on our way to Moab. But if you want to find out why it's on the trailer instead of me driving it, that's going to be for the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.